In this video, we're going to go over a topic that can be really useful for analyses that I haven't really seen talked about throughout the Tableau community. This topic is on creating dynamically changing sets with the results from calculated fields. This way of creating sets allows you to do analyses on segments of consumers or products with all the data associated with that consumer or product. And as an example, if you're doing any kind of cohort analyses and you want to focus on a segment of your customers based on various conditions, you can create a calculated field with those conditions. And when they are met, those customers will appear in your set. Here I have a customer name set. And if they've bought this specific product that I've put into a parameter after this specific year that I've also put into the parameter, their names will appear in the view. And as I shift these parameters, they will change the calculated field that is used to make the set. So you can see the customer segment changing as well, but you still have access to all the data associated with these customers. This way of making sets creates a very flexible environment where you can easily change the conditions and get the group of customers that meet your requirements. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to create dynamically changing sets based on calculated fields and be able to use this concept to enhance your own analyses. Let's jump right into the example and create the set. Here I'm using the sample superstore data and what we're analyzing is the customer product buying trends. So if a customer buys a certain product, what are some other products that they might have bought in the past? And to do this, it would be super useful to have a way to create a set of customer names based on the purchase of a certain product. If we just try to create a set from customer name with the default settings, so through conditions and then by field and then product name, we're only given the options to do it by aggregation, which isn't what we want. We wanna do it by specific product. So if we try product name equals to a specific product by formula, this also gives us an error because this formula has to be an aggregation as well. So what we can do is create a calculator field, which I've done here called customer segmentation logic, which is essentially just conditional statements to help us drill down to the set that we want. And here it's just an if statement uh, with the product name equals to a parameter we define. And if you wanna learn more about the basics of parameters, make sure to check out my last video where I go through the process of creating and modifying parameters then it's just equal to one and then end because we don't need an else statement. It'll just be null for all the other data rows. And we can look, take a look at what I mean by data rows by going to the data source. And then if we scroll over to the very end here, we can see customer segmentation has its own column and it has values for every single row. Here, all we see are nulls. If I expand this to more rows, we can see that some of them are equal to one because they satisfy the condition we had in our calculated field. So after this calculated field, we can create a set from the customer names. This is the most important part. So creating that set and then going to the condition and then by field, now we can reference our calculated field, which is the customer segmentation logic and setting the sum of that to be greater than or equal to one, because maybe a customer buys a product more than once on two different days. So the aggregation will be more than one. The important thing is that if a customer never buys that product, they will have a null aggregation. So they won't be included in the set. The great thing about creating these dynamic sets Oh, so I've already created the customer set here that I'll use for example. So I'll just X this. And now we can take a look at what this output is in our view. So I have a filter for the customer names that satisfy the condition. And then these are just for product visibility. So we can see that the item that we wanted in the product name parameter is this item. And if the customer bought this item, then they would be included in the set. And we can just scroll down and see that all of these people have bought this item in the past. And the great thing about creating dynamic sets this way 
is that you can add as many conditions as you would like. So maybe we only want to see customers that bought this product after 2020. So we can go back into this calculated field and then add another condition. So and year of order date is greater than or equal to 2021. And now we can see that all the customers that purchased before 2020 are filtered out. And you can also notice that the other products that they've bought before 2020 will appear as well because the condition specifies a specific product of interest for a certain customer group. And for the customer group that is created, we're able to work with all their data because we only have a filter to include that specific set of customers. With this way of creating the set, we can now focus on the customer group and do various analyses on their purchase patterns. So in my next sheet here, I have the sum of profits on the X axis and the sum of sales on the Y axis, where the orange marks are the customers in our set. And we can see that the specific set of customers are not that profitable. And we can also change the product name to see other sets as well. So here for stackable trays, there's only three customers that bought uh, this type of item uh, and also after 2020. I've also created, uh, so I'm going to go back and then I've also created a bar chart here to see what kind of items these customers are also buying. And it seems like they're also buying a lot of the Elden Fold and Roll cart systems and Xerox 1909 printers. And this way we can see kind of exactly what customers are buying for the, our specific set. So this is a relatively small data set and looking at products makes these customer segments very specific and might not give us the data we want. So I created another sheet here to visualize the subcategories instead. And the condition is similar where it's if the subcategory is equal to our subcategory parameter and the year of the order date is greater than or equal to 2021, then it equals to one. And then I just created the customer set the same way as before and used the customer name segment set subcategory. So these are all the customers that bought from the copier subcategory. And we can see that not a lot of people bought from this category, but the high value customers like Tamara and Raymond, which high value as in high profit and relatively high sales, they did buy from this category. When we switch this to another category, let's say furnishing, we can see that a lot of people bought from this category after 2020. So using calculated fields allow us to dynamically change the set when we change the parameters, which is great for these types of customer segmentations analyses. And this is just one example of using calculated fields to dynamically change sets, but there are many other applications for when you wanna focus on a specific set based on various conditions. And I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment them down below and I'll respond to them. If you enjoyed this video and want to be updated every time I post a new video, I would love for you to subscribe to me. I post a new video every Thursday.